everybody, Anne here, sitting here in front of the chicken yard, having my coffee with all of you. And it is a cold, frigid day. I think it's about 32 degrees right now. Overnight, I think it got down to 29 and 30. But before I went to bed, I had a nice fire going and it kept it warm all night long. In fact, I lit, I lit another one this morning because it was just so cold and it is still kind of going a little bit. I've got the door inside closed and the dampers shut. So um, so today, a couple things. First of all, I've been to the post office and I got a Prezi and I know who it's from. I can't wait to see what's all in it. And I'm also going to make some fire starters. So let's just start with the Prezi. There it is, and it is heavy. It even says it on the top. So, time to open this baby. Um, let's see, let me open it from this way, okay? Let me open it from this way. It's a heavy box, and getting cardboard boxes is even cooler now than ever because I, I use them for kindling, and they're great for that. All right. Let's see what this is. I can't wait. Oh, oh, oh. Whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Oh. You're right, it was heavy. Bubble wrap. <laughs> she got me a little thing. It says storage, and this is all from Donna, the lovely Miss Donna. Storage for hinges and screws. And inside. Oh, I'm glad I looked. There is a sanding sponge. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay. I can use this on a number of things, but the first thing that comes off the top of my head is cast iron. Cleaning up the cast iron. In addition, what was inside this box is plastic silverware. I use it all the time. It's wonderful. That is very, very thoughtful. Thank you so much. Storage for hinges and screws. I needed it. Okay, what's next? Oh, oh my goodness. Big garbage bags, heavy duty garbage bags. Donna, I used the last garbage bag today. So I'm thinking I've got to go buy some I don't have to now because I've got them. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. What next? More bubble wrap. Oh, and I've been using this like in areas around the windows um, where there's just a little cap. Things need to be sealed a little bit better. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. There's a ton of stuff in here. Oh. Who does this remind you of? Our sweet Oliver Valentine. Now you know why I love seeing Judy. She reminds me so much of Oliver. <gasps> Look at this, you guys. Look at Oliver. Oh, he is just gorgeous. Gorgeous dog. Okay, what's next? Four o'clock seeds. Color fuchsia. Just throw the seeds on the ground. No need to put in dirt, but you can put dirt... Uh, over seeds. They need the cold, wet weather to open hard seed shells, so I need to plant these now. Seeds will uh, drop starting in October. You will have to clean up. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh my goodness. I actually almost wish I had filmed that. Not only did Chapo come over, but Dinah came over. Both of them came over together this time chasing the chickens around. They didn't seem like they wanted to eat them. They just wanted to chase them. And then came and met up with Judy and we had such a time getting them to go back over on a Mr. Lucas property. Seth came over and helped wrangle and so all is well. Anyhow, so the four o'clock seeds. <sighs> These would be beautiful by your stream on the side where Judy would not run and play in. Yes, okay. I've never, I've never tried to grow anything like this, so this is going to be awesome. Okay, what's next? Let me put this over here. Um, another no. Oh, I can't draw either. Okay, she's drawn me a schematic. <laughs> she is so detailed. Your idea for the van was much simpler. This is why I never sent the, the sample build. Okay, 
This is, this is for the, the chicken door. And it is detailed instructions of her vision for how to build a frame that goes in that door um, for the van so that they could get in and out and they would be safe inside. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, Donna, I wish you could just come down here and help me do this. I'm such a bad builder, but I need to learn. I need to learn. And okay, so I'm gonna put this over here. There's, there's more clamps. I've got clamps. That's wonderful. What is this? Oh. All righty now. Insulating tape. This is gonna go around my windows and um, on the side of that frame where, where the wood-burning stove is. Oh yes, this is awesome. I'm gonna be so warm. Oh, she sent me, what is this? Rubber foam weather seal. Okay. Kind of the same thing, just a little different. This would probably actually be better around the, the wood burning stove frame. Um, I think it'll fit a little bit better, so that is awesome. Okay, what's next? Oh, 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 oh. Split green peas. You guys, I am obsessed with split the green pea and ham soup. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. I am stocked up. I'm not gonna have to buy, I'm not gonna have to buy these for a long, long time. And you know what I think I'm gonna make? I was gonna make some pork chops and apple butter <laughs> tonight. I, I went to the store, I got some pork chops, but I think instead I am going to make some green pea soup with ham and I've got a little bit of ham too. But you know what, the canned ham, I, I can't find the canned ham anywhere and I don't wanna buy spam, you know? Uh, so I have like one can of canned ham left and I just can't find it anywhere. I have bought these, um, these sh uh, shrink locked cured um, ham fillets that have a bone in them and so sometimes I'll, I'll get those and chop those up and put them in there but um, they're kind of expensive so I don't know I don't know why the I don't know why I can't find canned ham and more garbage bags oh my gosh Miss Donna thank you so very much this is all just you are so thoughtful oh yes more cardboard down in there Oh man, I am, I am hooked up. And even if I don't have ham, I've got like bacon bits, a whole bunch of bacon bits I can put down in there. Um, actually, I could put sausage. I could cook it with sausage. That would be delicious too, just like I do with my dirty rice and beans. Mm -mm -mm. And the good thing about this is it cooks up pretty fast. What I do is um, I may take, okay. For one whole recipe, just for me, well, and Judy, yeah, honestly, leftovers go to the chickens. Um, if I'm making just a small pot, I'll use about half. And then I will put half of that in the water and let that cook until it is basically mush. And then I'll put more beans in because I kind of like the firmer beans and let it cook longer until they are firm. And then by then the soup is done. Sometimes I put like, um, chicken bouillon, chicken stock in it, or or whatever. Um, oh, oh, there's more. There's more over here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Pain relief hot patch. I have to decide where I'm going to put this. I wonder if you can... Oh, it's got two patches in it. Oh, yes. Menthol and capsaicin. Capsaicin. You know that stuff, the, the chili pepper stuff. Um, I wonder if I can cut these. Use, uh, do not, uh, uh, avoid contact with the eyes. Directions. Apply to the area no more than three to four times daily. Peel back. It doesn't say any, that you can't cut it. I don't know. I'm going to have to look at these. Um, because I've got my right big toe. That, that toe and the knuckle is always killing me. And, God, the sun is coming behind me, so that's not that great. Um, I can use it on my back. I can use it on my knee that hurts all the time. 
and I've actually got one hip that bothers me, but you know what I've noticed? If I get up and force myself to move, everything kind of shakes itself out. But some days, like when it precipitates, there's nothing I can do about it. So, oh, this is all such wonderful stuff. And thank you for sharing the picture of Oliver. Oh, I got to show you this again. Look at Oliver. Such a sweetie. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this all back in and then um, make some fire starters. Yeah. You will need a egg carton that is cardboard and cotton balls. I put two in each slat on a double boiler. Just melt some wax. I made that out of a tin can. Isn't that nifty? <laughs> I think it is. And then just pour a little bit of wax into each one. You don't have to fill the thing completely full. Just make sure the cotton is pretty well soaked with the wax. Pour it in and just let it dry completely before you try and do anything else with it. And I figured since I had some cardboard extra, I would just roll it up um, and secure it with some twine and see if I can make another, like a fire log, fire starter, out of this thingy. So, yeah, let's see if I can do this. First thing I did is I just dipped each of the ends into the wax because I kind of wanted the ends to be done as well. I mean, you could probably submerge it completely, but I didn't have that much wax. So just let it drip off a little bit and then dip the other side inside the wax. Swish it around, make sure there's plenty of wax on it. And then that's what it looks like. Just make sure it's completely dry before you go on to the next step. And then I just pour, pour the wax over the top of it. And I also did it to some pine cones. Just poured wax over it, put it over a foil little placemat thingy, and just coated all the sides. So yeah, that's going to be interesting to see if this one works in the pine cones and whatnot. And then all the extra wax that came out onto the foil, I just put it back into the little pot and save it for later. Then you just have to cut them all apart. Not brain surgery here, just get them all separated into individual little fire starters. You need really sharp scissors. And there you go. Yep, looks pretty good. Holds the cotton ball in there. And yep, that's what the, that's what everything else looks like, the pine cones. I don't know if the pine cones are going to work. I don't even know if the, the this one, <laughs> the cardboard log starter will work. I could even cut that in half if I wanted to. So, yep, just pick them all up, store them somewhere. I'm just putting them in this plastic baggie. Keep them somewhere cool. And let's light this baby up. They start pretty well, even though it was freezing cold inside. And this is not how I normally build my fire. I mean, there's much more kindling kind of layered over the top. I just did this quickly because I didn't want to burn a full fire. I just wanted to demonstrate how these light up. Just blow on it a little bit, and then it will eventually all catch. And it just stays burning, and it lights your kindling on fire. And it's wonderful. I've used these many times, and they get fires going really, really great. And take a look at this, you guys. I'm here finishing up this video, and Miss Patsy just came and laid down by me. All of the other chickens are inside the chicken run, kind of like taking a nap together, all huddled up. And she just came and sat down right next to me. I love you, girl. Oh, there's Romeo. Romeo. Yep. This is his favorite hen. I hope you enjoyed this little fire starter tutorial. I've used those fire starters, the ones in the egg cartons, so many times. I usually do it with dryer lint, but I didn't have any dryer lint this time. So if you're out there, save me your dryer lint and your egg cartons. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.